Hello everyone, welcome back to another devlog for Terratoy, my voxel-based terraforming game. This month, I worked on something very special. As you could probably tell from the title, I wrote up an entire programming language in order to help the development of my game. The reason I decided to spend an entire month working on this project is simple. My game needs content, a lot of it, in the form of procedurally generated props. Previously, I simply wrote the code for generating these props in a C++ source file. But for a number of reasons, this method would become very clunky and annoying if I decided to create a large number of props. Additionally, since the props were written in source code, anytime I decided to make even a tiny change, such as changing a single color, I'd have to close and recompile the game, which takes a lot of time. There are a number of other solutions to these problems, such as using an existing scripting language, but I ultimately thought it would just be fun to make my own. For those that are interested, the full source code of the language is linked in the description. Generally, programming languages are implemented in three stages. The lexer, the parser, and the interpreter or compiler. My language is interpreted, so I wrote an interpreter. The first stage is the lexer. The job of the lexer is pretty simple. It's to take the source file and break it up into a list of tokens, or words if you will. This was by far the quickest part to write, and as you can see it's pretty simple. It takes this source file here and gives me a list of tokens, which are identified as either an operator, an identifier, or a new line. The next piece is the parser. The job of the parser is to take the list of tokens and to generate what's called an abstract syntax tree. An abstract syntax tree is a tree-like structure that represents the control flow of your program. For example, the tree for the statement x equals 1 plus 2 would look something like this. The assignment operator would be the top level node, with an x on the left and an addition operator on the right with the numbers as its children. All of the statements in the program are then chained together into a list. Function calls, control flow statements, and other elements are also implemented similarly. I don't really have anything to show for my implementation as I didn't write any sort of visualizer for the tree, but if you want to look at it, the source code is available. The last part is the interpreter. The interpreter is what actually executes the code. Its job is to traverse through the abstract syntax tree and carry out each operation step by step. So in the example from before, the interpreter would start at the bottom of the tree, first computing 1 plus 2. The tree then becomes x equals 3. The interpreter then carries out the assignment, storing the value of x in an array somewhere. This happens for every element in the tree until the program has completed. Here's the very first program I had fully work in my language, which I decided to call PropScript. In total, I only ended up adding a few control flow features, those being if statements, for loops, and functions. I wanted to keep the language pretty minimal, so I don't waste too much time on it. Now that I had the language finished, the next step was to start implementing my props with it. The first prop I implemented with PropScript was the standard apple tree. As you can see, the code is much simpler in PropScript compared to the original C++. And of course, it has the main feature I wanted when I set out on this project. I can make edits to the prop in real time without having to restart the game. All I have to do is make the edit I want, save the file, then hit a key in game to reload all the props. And here we see the changes reflected right away, without needing to relaunch the game. I then spent a day just adding a bunch of props. And here we have all of the props I managed to add. We have the apple tree, a beach towel and a beach umbrella to go with it, a birch tree, a bush, the cactus from a few devlogs ago, a group of cattails, an evergreen tree, a flower bush, 
a poplar tree, a sakura tree, and finally, a sunflower. And that's everything for this week. Sorry I didn't have quite as many visual things to show, but this language was one of the most fun projects I've ever made, so I really wanted to show it off. Next video should come with a bunch of interesting visual changes, and more props of course. See you then.